Okay, so I want to show you how to take a 24 pegs 3 16 gauge loom and um, make this cute little jellyfish. If I can get the camera to focus, there it is. Cute little jellyfish. And it's actually a really easy pattern to make. Okay. So this is probably one of the easiest patterns I've probably ever created. <laughs> okay, so what you need is you need your loom that's 20. And you could do this on a larger loom. You, you can. You don't have to exactly do it on um, this loom. Okay, you could do this on a larger loom. Okay, but it won't be keychain size. I mean, you could do it on the fourth inch cage, and it might be more keychain size, but it'll be a little bigger than this. Okay, and you take a thin yarn, um, I believe this is more of a, of a DK weight, this was done with a fingering weight yarn, okay, um, it's up to you, it's a great idea on, on messing with scrap yarn on how to do this, and uh, so what you want to do is you want to draw string cast on circularly, and um, we work from the bottom up and this is the one thing where you're not sitting there pulling all the drawstrings together because you need to keep them loose in order to do add the tentacles okay and I'm going to tell you there is no polyfill involved in this pattern none there's no polyfill okay show you how that works all right so what you do is draw string cast on and then you're going to knit purl so you're going to do a rib stitch for six rows okay and what that's going to do is um, allow for texturing on the bottom so it's a subtle texture I mean you could knit but it really does help to go ahead and do that knit one purl one okay alrighty so here's how we want to do it we're going to start off and we're going to knit one and purl one It's a little easier when you can hold it closer to you. Okay. Pearl. Okay, and then knit. And pearl. So you're going to knit pearl all the way around. And you're going to do that for a total of six rows. Okay. So pause the video. Do that for six rows knit purl for six rows and then we'll come back and we will do the next section so where we're starting is under here first okay which is going to kind of do the little lift that you want all right let's go ahead and pause the video complete your six rows and then we'll come back and we'll do the next section okay as you can see I completed my six rows of a rib stitch, one by one rib stitch, and now I want to do is do a entire row of purl. Okay, so we're just going to purl an entire row, and what this is going to do is it offers a directional change in the um, in a garment or in for instance this design it changes the direction for instance you can see it's a change in movement with this because there's your purl line there's your rib stitch all right so what you want to do is go ahead and um, purl all the way around 
okay? And then we'll be ready to start the next section, all right? So pause the video and do a row of purl, and then we'll be ready to start the next section. Okay, so I've done my row of purl, and now what I need to do is 10 rows of knit. So um, what you want to do is knit for 10 rows, and then when we come back, we will be ready to finish off the actual top of the jellyfish and then we'll be ready to start the next section here, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and complete your 10 rows of knit and then we'll come back and be ready to do this section here, okay? Okay, so um, I've knitted my 10 rows and the next thing I want to do for row 18 and 19 is I want to knit one, purl one for two rows. So I'm going to do two rows of a rib stitch where I knit one, purl one, all the way around, just like I did down here. So purl one, I mean knit one, purl one, all the way around for two rows. So knit one, purl one. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and complete two rows of a one by one rib stitch just like we did down here. And then when we come back, we're going to do what I call a prep decrease and then a drawstring bind off. Okay, so I've done my two rows of knit and purl. So the next thing I want to do is what I call a prep decrease. And it's going to be a little different than I um, normally do. So what I want to do is knit that. Then I want to take this stitch back here. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to toss the bottom loop over. Okay. So I'm going to knit two stitches. Take that second stitch, move it over, toss the bottom loop over. Okay. I'm going to do this all the way around where I knit the two stitches. And I take that second stitch and move it over and knit the bottom stitch over. Okay. I'm going to do that all the way around so I should have half the stitches. So I should have 12 stitches left with every other stitch peg empty and every other peg having a stitch. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, so you knit two, take that first stitch, put it on peg two, toss the bottom loop over. Okay, so pause the video, get that much done, and then we'll go on from there. Okay, so as you can see, every other Peg is empty. So here's what we want to do. You want to cut your tail. Okay. You want to toss that loop over and pull through. Okay. And you're not going to pull this tight because you're basically going to make a tassel that you're going to shove up into the um, jellyfish head here, okay, and what that's going to do is, uh, that's going to actually use as a stuffing, but also gives the tentacle effect that you want from a jellyfish look, okay. So this is a really, actually simple pattern, and it's great for little keychains. Now you can do this on a bigger loom. Um, my suggestion is maybe you'd want to do an I-cord for your little tentacle area. Do several I-cords and that kind of thing instead. And that way you can wash it. But if you do it like I'm doing right now, what I'm going to show you, you're not really going to be able to wash it that well. Okay, so this is really just kind of a fun um, 
gift for a keychain or something that hangs from the rear view mirror, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to pull that through and then pull through. All right, so we have that. All right, and we haven't pulled tight our two. And so what we need to do now is um, we need to get our yarn and we need to wrap the loom 40 times. Now this is a little thicker yarn. You wrap it around, cut it, and you cut you a small version here. You can send it through a needle. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to find your halfway point. Okay. And so what you want to do is you've wrapped it 40 times. And you want to find your kind of what your halfway point is, which is right through here. So you're going to find that bottom. You're going to send the needle through. Make sure you get all the areas. And you're going to grab that end. And then you're going to tie it off. Okay. And this is like a really easy way to make a tassel and you can tie it off as tight as you can. Okay. Alright. Once you do that, you want to take some pretty sharp scissors and start cutting. I'm going to say these are my sharpest. Where are my sharpest ones? Okay, here's my sharp ones. And what you want to do is you just want to cut it down. And you pull it out. Okay. All right. So you have this nice thick tasseled area, and you can smooth it out. And my suggestion is, okay. So you need to find out where your bottom and top is. This is your bottom. This is your top. What you're gonna do is you're gonna send that up. Okay. And you're gonna tighten that, just like you would have. All right, now here's where the rest of this comes in at. Okay, so you're going to start tightening this. This is where I start shoving this up in there. Okay, while trying to keep this stretched out, and then I just keep pulling it. Okay. So, there you have that, and you can pull it as tight as you want, okay, and then what I like to do is go around a couple of times, and I find one of my longer ones like this, and I tie it off. And then what you'll do, 
you go in and snip and clean up your little tentacles. And they're kind of all even. Okay. Now, you'll want to get that end tied off. So, what I like to do is tie off my top part of my tassel with my drawstring. Okay. And then you have created your jellyfish. Okay. Now, um,. I usually just did a half knot and attached it to the key ring. This is an example of just two different yarns. This is more of a DK weight, and this is a fingering weight here. So you see how much smaller it is. All right. But what I like to do is go in, and uh, what you can do is uh, create a little. Not here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to cut that edge. And then you just attach it to your little key ring. Okay. There you go. And that is how you make a jellyfish on. The little 24 316th loom for a little key ring or key fob.